Cell notation for the galvanic cell. The cell notation is basically a shorthand representation or a summary of the cell's components and reactions. This is an, an example of what a cell notation can look like. We'll go through this example in a moment. In the previous lesson, we looked at the zinc copper galvanic cell and we said the following we said that by looking at the table the table 4b which i also have dealt with in the previous lesson we said that the zinc half cell was the anode half cell and oxidation takes place at the anode and we said that the zinc was oxidized so zinc metal loses electrons forming zn2 plus plus 2e minus two electrons and then the copper half cell was the cathode half cell and we said that reduction takes place in the cathode half cell and the copper 2 plus ions, which are contained in the electrolyte solution over here. Remember, there's Cu2 plus ions over here. Those copper ions accept the two electrons that travel from the anode half cell to form solid copper, which coats the cathode. Now, remember, in the anode half cell, the Zn2 plus ions are already contained here in this electrolyte solution. And when the zinc electrode is oxidized, further Zn2 plus ions are deposited into the solution. So the cell notation is basically a way of summarizing what is going on in our galvanic cell. So the cell notation is always represented by a double line in the middle, and the double line represents the salt bridge. The salt bridge is always going to separate the anode half cell and the cathode half cell. Now, when we draw a cell notation, we always include the things going on in the anode on the left-hand side. So you don't have to write anode on top of yours, but I'm just doing it so I can show you. And then everything going on in the cathode on the right-hand side. Now, what we include here on the left-hand side is the following. Your solids, what your electrodes are made up of, your solids are always on the outside of your cell notation. So the, on the furthest left would be your zinc electrode. It's a solid. On the furthest right-hand side, which would be your copper, it's your solid electrode. Then we separate our solids with a single line. And over here on the inside, this represents the ions contained in the electrolytes solution. So for my anode half cell, my anode is on my left, I've got Zn2 plus ions. So we've got Zn2 plus, and that is aqueous. We don't include the sulfate ions, you just include the ions that relate to the anode. And then in your cathode half cell, we've got Cu2+, which is also aqueous. Now, another small thing is remember that these half cells, this galvanic cell is set up under standard conditions, which is one mole per cubic decimeter. The electrolyte has to be at that particular concentration. So we need to write that concentration underneath our aqueous ions, our ions over here. So essentially, the cell notation again, is as follows. Salt bridge in the middle, double lines representing the salt bridge. To the left-hand side is everything that has to do with the anode. To the right-hand side is everything that has to do with the cathode. As you can see, your solid metal, your electrode is always contained on the outsides. Just think that if you build a little house, the outside of your house, your walls, this wall and this wall on the far outer ends, those are solids. Those are your electrodes, solids, solids. And then on the inside, inside, so between your salt bridge and your solid, between your salt bridge and your solid, we have the electrolyte. The electrolyte that is in contact with the anode, we have to write the standard conditions underneath, and the electrolyte that is in contact with the cathode. As you can also see, different phases are separated by one line. So if we go back to our previous example over here, you'll see that I separated a solid and an aqueous with a solid line. Same thing here. Solid and aqueous, we separated with a solid line. And if I had more than one of the same type of phase, not in this example over here, but if I did, I would separate those by a comma. If you take a look at this particular example, you'll see here's the salt bridge. So all of this is in the anode half cell or the anode component, and this would be the cathode. And as you can see here, I've got platinum on either end of my cell notation. Now, remember I said that there must be a solid on the ends of your cell notation. And the reason why we have solids over here and they're both platinum is because in my anode half cell, in my cathode half cell, I have gases. And remember, we have gases, we have aqueous solutions, but our electrodes themselves have to be a solid. So we choose an inert 
metals such as platinum and reactive metal to be the solid and the solid forms a surface where oxidation and reduction reactions can happen. So let's do a few more examples of how we would do the salt bridge for various cells that I've done. So this is a galvanic cell, a CUPB copper lead galvanic cell that I did in my previous video. We spoke about how to get the half reactions using the table. So if you missed that video, go check out the playlist link below. But in this video, we're going to focus on how to do the cell notation. So as you can see, this is my anode half cell as mentioned over here. And this one is my cathode half cell. And they actually tell me the ions involved here as well. So just because this particular photo of the galvanic cell has the anode on the right hand side, it does not mean that when I do the cell notation, the anode must be on the right. The anode is always on the left. So salt bridge in the middle, then we've got uh, at the outer end, we've got lead and it's a solid, it's my electrode. Single line, we've got PB2+, plus. it's my iron in contact with my anode aqueous. Then we've got the cathode on the right hand side, again on the end, it's copper, solid my electrode and I've got Cu2 plus aqueous and don't forget your standard conditions one mole per cubic decimeter for the electrolyte solutions it's very important to write that underneath then what about something that involves a gas so something like this now if you can remember from the previous video we said that magnesium was oxidized because it's higher up on the table. There's my hydrogen and my hydrogen ions. There's magnesium and magnesium ions. This one is higher up on the table. It's a stronger reducing agent. So magnesium is oxidized, which means that magnesium is my anode. Remember anox, anode oxidation. And then over here, my hydrogen ions, that is going to be what is being reduced. So this would then be my cathode. Reduction takes place at the cathode, red cat. So when we do the cell notation, again, salt bridge in the middle. So component X would be the salt bridge. Then on the left-hand side is the anode. So on the outer ends, we've got solid magnesium as my electrode. The electrolyte, the iron within the electrolyte is Mg2 plus aqueous. Then my cathode is on the right hand side. Now, very important, let's start over here. The ions that are in contact with my cathode would, would be the H plus ions, aqueous. Separate with a single line, we've got hydrogen gas being pumped in, hydrogen gas. And if you take a look at the half reaction, it does go from your ions to your gas. You have to include that hydrogen as a gas being pumped in. But then we're going to do another solid line. And on the outside, we're going to do our platinum electrode, our inert platinum electrode, our solid electrode where the reduction or oxidation reaction will happen. In this case, reduction because it's at the cathode. Always just double check that on the outsides of your cell notation, you have a solid. In the next lesson, we'll go over how to write the overall or net cell reaction for galvanic cells.